I just want to start off and say that I am okay and will make a 100% recovery. Uh, I can still give you one in seven eighths thumbs up. Um, but I, I hurt myself two days ago on the jointer. Uh, and this was a video that I didn't want to make when I, that day that I hurt myself, I was really embarrassed about it. And of course I scared the absolute SHIT out of myself. And the reason I was really embarrassed is as somebody who is a woodworking educator, uh, who preaches safety, I did something dumb and you know, I was embarrassed, but I always say on this channel, we don't, we don't hide our mistakes. And I want to tell you what I did wrong, what I learned from that, uh, how I'm going to prepare for that in the future. And also I want to talk to you about what happens if you are injured, because, um, there is a different, your body goes into primal mode and sometimes you can't help yourself. And for about 30 seconds, I was so confused that I didn't know what to do. And I had to stop and calm myself down and take a deep breath. And I was really scared that I had lost my thumb. And I, I'm not doing this video to glorify, you know, one of the, I hate when people say things like, I don't trust a woodworker who has all their fingers or, you know, old guys are like, you're not a real woodworker till you lose a, uh, half your finger. Because it's just not true. When I started woodworking, every guy, every old guy that I met that was really good at woodworking was missing a portion of some finger. And I almost quit in the beginning because I was like, look, I don't want to be, you know, 50 years old and have eight fingers. Like, that's just not something I want to do. But then I, I looked into it and realized that uh, the, the thoughts on safety and uh, safety equipment has come so far uh, in recent years that people don't think like that anymore. And I don't think like that. And this was, a, I got really lucky and it was a reminder to stay safe in the future and trust your instincts. Gosh, I should have listened to myself. Um, so let's go to join it. Let me show you what I was doing and I'm gonna take you through the incident, what happened, uh, what I would do differently in the future and kind of give you a little advice on how to prepare for this kind of stuff. We're gonna do, uh, in January, I wanna, I wanna do a full safety video. We'll bring in somebody who is trained in trauma first aid and we'll talk about different kinds of injuries that can happen in the wood shop, how to prepare for them, and what things you should have in your shop at all times so that you can make sure that uh, if the unfortunate does happen that you are prepared. So let's head over to the joiner. So I actually haven't even moved the piece from when I got hurt. This was what I was jointing, uh, and I, I just got back into the shop for the first time just now. Um, and so what I had done was we had, I, these were for legs and I had milled these up as one piece. So they were together like this when I milled them up and I felt really comfortable doing that. And I was of course using push blocks to do that. But of course, when you cut big, thick eight quarter lumber, uh, when you split it down the middle, you expose areas of wood that have more moisture content to the outside. And they have a tendency to bow a little bit because these were four legs of a table. I really wanted to take the bow out of it. I had four legs and I had done three of them. I was laser focused. What I was doing because I needed it to stay square is I was pushing it through like this. And then when it got to the other side, I would lift up and go and keep pressing it against the fence. And I got three of those done. My jig manufacturer that uh, showed up with some jigs and I was giving him a check and we were talking and catching up. Uh, but he told me about his holiday schedule and they were shutting down for a week and I was sort of thinking about that and trying to plan around it. And I stopped being laser focused. And so what I did was I pushed the piece forward and I moved my left hand and I kept going. My left hand is up here and I never lifted up my hand. I just kept pushing it forward. And my thumb came across the jointer. Uh, and here, I'm gonna warn you now, I'm gonna show you what it looked like. Uh, I'll show you what it looks like right now. Uh, and there'll be a couple pictures of when it first happened. And the only reason I'm showing you this is because I want you to kind of understand the sort of panic that happens in your brain when you see these sort of things. When you get hurt, the thing that happens immediately is your body goes into protecting itself. I've had some trauma in my life where I felt some extreme pain. In fact, if you want to go watch my No Zero Days video, I tell a story uh, that was earlier, about 10 years ago, uh, where I experienced a big trauma. Uh, your body goes into shock and protects itself. So you know that it happened at first because it feels like you got shocked by electricity. You're like, something bad has happened. I jump back to about right here. This is where I took my apron off. Um, and I knew, I knew what had happened, but I was so scared to look because every story I'd heard about a jointer was, it takes fingers, it, take hand, it takes hands, and I know that your body shuts down any pain receptors almost immediately. So it took a moment of panic where I was just frozen in fear. 
and you saw what my thumb looked like. Uh, now you can imagine when you look down at that, there's, there's blood coming out of it, so you can't tell what's happening. So I didn't know what to do. I, I had this, my brain just stopped working for a second, and finally uh, I grabbed, you know, I, I said, Jonathan, you have to take a deep breath. So I took a deep breath. I turned off the jointer. I turned off the dust collector. I don't remember why I thought that was so important, but I went and turned off the dust collector, and I walked to the bathroom. Uh, in fact, <laughs> there's a trail of blood here. I won't show you my panic trail around the shop, but I got paper towels, I, I blotted it, and then I said, all right, you have to look. Uh, and at this point, I didn't know if my thumb was still attached. I didn't know if it was there. So I took the paper towel away, I looked, and I said, okay, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay, you need to relax. Uh, so I took a deep breath, and what the, the lesson here is, should you ever be injured, you need to stop, especially if you're by yourself. I was by myself, um, so if something really bad had happened, I and I had passed out or, or freaked out, uh, I would have done myself no favors. So it's always important to think about what you're doing. Listen to your spidey senses. Don't do dumb stuff. I'm gonna show you what uh, I would do differently, but most importantly, should you ever be in a situation where your body takes a trauma, you need to take a deep breath and you need to just relax and say, the best thing I can do for myself right now is I need to take a deep breath and I need to stop the bleeding uh, and I need to get somewhere where I can get help. Let me show you what I would do on the jointer. Now, as you can see, first of all, I was taking a 16th of an inch cut on something super small. That was a big mistake. I should have been taking a 64th, no more. I should have been using push sticks. So uh, I could have just as easily as using my hands, although it's a little bit more awkward, I could have easily pressed this up against and kept a board over here. And even if it hit the jointer, it's gonna just push my hand back. This is hardened plastic and it's gonna kick your hand back and not suck anything into there. Um, and I could have easily done that or even better, I could have just not done it. There's a lot of other ways. I have videos on how to joint things without a joiner, and I could have found another way, but because I was rushing and I wanted to get this done so we could get the video out the day after Christmas, uh, I, I overrode my senses and I made a dumb mistake. And I'm so angry at myself because I got lucky. When you see my thumb there, that is the luckiest you will ever get with a jointer. Nothing will ever be less bad than what you saw of my thumb, and that is, you saw my thumb, that is vicious, that is terrible. Let's head over to the bench. I wanna just say a couple more things and I'll let you get back to uh, playing with your new tools and Christmas presents. I think if you take nothing else from this video, you should take that nobody ever plans on having an injury. Uh, I have been adamant about safety for a long time and I rarely, rarely mess that up. Um, but you can plan to avoid an injury and every time you walk up to a tool, whether it's a handheld, hand tool or something that you plug in, you can always say, how is this gonna hurt me? How can I avoid that? What can I do? Or if something makes you uncomfortable, don't do it. There's a million ways in woodworking to do things and you don't have to use that tool if it's sketching you out. So every time you walk up to a tool, stop, think and say, how is this dangerous and how can I avoid it? And how can I plan to avoid it? And never compromise. Always slow down, never rush through what you're doing. And remember that Everybody who's missing a finger, a hand, or has had a life-changing injury didn't intend to do it, and they just made a mistake. And, you know, even guys like Jimmy Duressa is a perfect example. He made it, you know, whatever, his whole life until a couple years ago without ever having uh, a major hand injury, and then he lost part of his pinky on his table saw. And, of course, he got a saw stop right afterwards, and I'm sure that he thinks a lot more before he does things. I know that I will, and as somebody that you come to for information and trust, you know, I will, I will not show an unsafe way to do things. So I appreciate you guys listening to my story. I'm sorry for the gory pictures. Uh, but like I said, uh, although I'm ashamed that it happened and I'm embarrassed, we don't hide our mistakes here. And so I wanted to share this story with you. Uh, guys, thanks for watching. Thumbs up. <laughs> and uh, of course, stay safe in the shop. We'll have a video coming out soon uh, about different safety and first aid procedures along with uh, what types of materials you should carry. Have a wonderful day.